Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where you are rewarded for knowing obscure answers. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Couple number one. Hi, Zander. I'm Mark. This is Lynn, my wife of 30 years, and we're from Telford in Shropshire. Couple number two. Uh, I'm Chris. This is my friend Dave, uh, and we're from the Isle of Wight. Couple number three. I'm Cliff. This is cousin Alan, and we're both from North Shields. And finally, couple number four. Hello, I'm Becky from Surrey. This is my friend Sam from London. We used to work together. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks, all of you. We'll find out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one person for me to introduce. He's got a memory like one of those animals which never forget. I forget what they're called. It's my pointless <laughs> friend, is Richard. Hi, uh... Hi everyone. Hi, uh... Afternoon to you. And to you. How are you today? I'm very well. I'm very so we've got well. two returning pairs, haven't we? Neither pair really covered themselves in glory last time. Mark and Lynn saw very little of, didn't we? Uh, yeah. Cliff and Alan, we saw a little bit more of, but not much. Now, sometimes I do a little guessing game with you with one of our people here. Who, somebody here, who do you reckon it is? Somebody here is a school teacher. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I, yeah. yeah I think the, I you know, know who what? that might be. There's always one, isn't there? There's always one. There's always one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Round one, yes. proper old school pointless. I saw do yeah, some thinking will need to be done on, on question one. Very good. Sorry about that, everyone. Occasionally no. we've got to do it though. Uh, that, no, that is good. Now all our questions on pointless have been put to one hundred people before the show. Our contestants here need to find the obscure answers our one hundred people didn't get. Everyone's obviously trying to find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our one hundred people gave. And each time that happens, we will add two hundred and fifty pounds to the jackpot. David and Isabel didn't win the jackpot last time, so we had another one thousand pounds to that. So today's jackpot starts off at two thousand pounds. <laughs> right. If everyone's ready, let's play pointless. OK, in this round, I'll take an answer from each of you, but there's to be no conferring. Whichever pair has the highest score at the end of the round will, of course, be eliminated. Now, our first category today is... Shakespeare. There you go, Shakespeare. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Shakespeare plays. Shakespeare plays, Richard. Yeah, if it's going to be Shakespeare, it's probably it, going to be his plays, really be isn't his it? Plays. Not, not his essays. Yeah, it's unlikely to be his woodwork, I wouldn't yeah. have thought. <laughs> On each pass, we're going to show you seven clues uh, to Shakespeare plays. Can you name the plays, please? There's going to be 14 plays to guess in all at home. Very best of luck, one and all. OK, so we are looking for the title of each of these Shakespeare plays, and we have got... Known as the Scottish play, the title character is father to Goneril Regan and Cordelia. The history play is set most recently in time. The title refers to the 5th of January. The title character is stabbed by Brutus. Achilles and Ulysses are characters in this play and features the play within a play referred to as The Mousetrap. I'll read those all one last time. Known as the Scottish play, the title character is father to Goneril Regan and Cordelia. The history play is set most recently in time. The title refers to the 5th of January. The title character is stabbed by Brutus. Achilles and Ulysses are characters in this play and features the play within a play referred to as The Mousetrap. There we are, seven clues to seven Shakespeare plays. Now then, Mark and Lynn, you all drew lots before the show and today you are going first. Again! Again! Yes. You were on yes. that podium last time. Yes. And remind us what it did for you, Lynn. Not a lot, no. We didn't do very well at very high scoring. It was a very high-scoring round, actually, Yes, that one. 195. Fashion wasn't really our subject, nor was Shakespeare. <laughs> really? Shakespeare not good for you? No, but better than fashion. OK. Now, remind us what you do, Lynn. Yep, I, um, I teach card-making. It was a hobby, and then um, I, I grew to love it, gave up the day job. What was your it, day job? Well, in the past, I've been a PE teacher, and then I decided far too much paperwork in teaching. More card work was uh, more up your... Yeah. Up your street. Yeah, absolutely. I really enjoy the card making. Good, Good stuff. Yeah. OK, now then. There you are. Well, you get first pick of the board, so how are we feeling about this? Well, I think I know one. I'm hoping it's right. So, known as the Scottish play, Macbeth. Macbeth, says Lynn. Macbeth. It's a bit brave, saying Macbeth like that, mm. brazenly, just coming out of it like that. 
supposed to be bad luck, they say, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But that's in the theatre, so surely not in a television studio. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn says Macbeth. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. That's right. 75. That's a high score. 75 for Macbeth. I tell you, you can tell you were a PE teacher. Can you? <laughs> well, looking at seven Shakespeare questions going on, I don't really know any of those. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's a giveaway, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing bad has happened. My computer's just turned itself on. That's the first time in 500 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, OK, now then, David. Welcome to the show. What do you do, David? I'm a retired school teacher. A retired school teacher. I am what indeed. did you teach? I taught sport as well. Good for you. <laughs> OK, <laughs> which sports did you teach? I taught a whole range of sports, athletics, rugby, cricket, tennis. OK, and what do you like getting up to in your spare time, David? Um, I sing with an Irish Cayley band. I write silly poems, silly limericks um, for a well-known uh, daily newspaper. Would they have a silly limerick department on that? They do, yes. <laughs> how, how often do you do that? Um, I send them up reasonably regularly. I've had about four published uh, so far. OK. Uh, let's have an answer from this board. There are six left. Uh, being a PE teacher, I'm, I'm also really struggling with this board. Um, I'm going to go for the history play set most recently in time as The Merchant of Venice. OK, The Merchant of Venice, says David. The Merchant of Venice. Is that the history play set most recently? Let's find out. No, I'm afraid not. Uh, that scores you the maximum of 100 points. I'm sorry, David. Yeah, sorry, David. Not, not a history either, uh, Merchant of Venice, I'm afraid. But at least you haven't been drummed out of the PE Teachers Union. So it's, uh, <laughs> imagine if you got it right, they'd have been at home just kind of weeping into their coffee, wouldn't they? Dave, what have you done? <laughs> Cliff, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, remind us what happened last time. We didn't do very well at all. Well, you, did, you, got, right, you got to round two. Yeah. Couldn't spell, sorry. I've, I've been there myself, so uh, I can't, I can't criticise that. I know how easily that mistake is made. Um, Cliff, remind us what you do. Uh, I used to work in construction, but I got hurt, so now I'm going back to university or college to do something different. OK. And uh, what do you like getting up to in your spare I like time? walking, reading, watching sport. OK. Now, how do you reckon you're going to do on this? How's Shakespeare? Not good at all. But I will go... The title character is stabbed by Brutus and Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar, says Cliff. Julius Caesar. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's absolutely right. 41. <laughs> Best score of the round so far, Cliff. Very well done. Well played, Cliff. I'm going to assume you've never been a PE teacher in your time, which is why that score is so low. I don't know very, much PE either. It's very impressively done. Uh, in 2012, the Spanish, their archaeologists think they found exactly where Julius Caesar fell, much as our archaeologists found Richard III. They found it it's next to, literally next to a, a bus stop in Rome. They found the exact spot they think Julius Caesar fell. They haven't dug Spanish it up. Spanish archaeologists? Yeah. Did you say? So it, it took the Spaniards to find that? It did, yeah. In Rome? Yeah, but that's, Fair enough. That's, that's acceptable. We, it is. We're all Europeans. Yeah, that's true. That's good. <laughs> yeah, there we are. OK, now, uh, Becky. Hello. Becky, you're the last person to have this board. Yes. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. What do you do, Becky? I'm a full-time mum. How many children do you have? Just the one. Just the one. How yes. old? He's 19 months. Wow. So, I don't get up to much at the moment. <laughs> no, no. OK, um, and how is Shakespeare for you? Well, um, I did one of them at school. So I know one for sure. OK, do you want to talk us through the board? So I would guess the play within a play might be a comedy of errors. The Achilles and Ulysses might be Antony and Cleopatra. But I think I'm going to go safe. The title character for Goneril, Reagan and Cordelia is King Lear. King Lear, says Becky. Let's see if King Lear's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. King Lear. Nineteen. <laughs> well done, Becky. Nineteen for King Lear.
We've said before, haven't we, that Shakespeare essentially splits into, into two. It's the one you did at school and all the other yeah. ones. And uh, so uh, that turned up very nicely for you there. The history play set most recently in time is Henry VIII. Four points, so very well done if you said that. Do you know this one's under the title refers to the 5th of January? Twelfth night. Twelfth night, absolutely. Would have scored you 12. Um, now, the play within a play referred to as the mousetrap. A Hamlet. It is Hamlet, yep. That would have scored two. And this last one is a pointless answer. So, I'll give you a go, but it's a tough one. Achilles and Ulysses are characters in this play. I know it. Oh, oh brilliant. Go on, yeah, no, I guess. Yeah, um... <laughs> hey, shh. He knows it. Oh, shh. This is going to be amazing. He knows it. This is going to be great. I, I didn't think... It. Honestly, I didn't think you would know it. So, yeah. it's terrific news that you do. Excellent. Shall we... What, how do you want to do this? <laughs> um, I uh, can't think what it is. I can't think what it is. <laughs> uh, it's Troy and Cressida. Cressida. Yes, Troy and Cressida. Very well done if you said that at home. There's a PE teacher who said that at home. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. OK, let's have a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. 19, the best score of that pass. Becky and Sam, well done. Looking pretty strong going into the next pass. Uh, then up to 41. Well done, Cliff. Lovely low score there. Uh, then up to 75, where we find Lynn and Mark. And then David and Chris, 100. You're not way ahead of Mark and Lynn, but Chris, we need a good answer from you in the next pass. Best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second place please take their places at the podium? OK, let's put seven more Shakespeare plays up on the board, and here they come. We have got... Largely set in the Forest of Arden, predominantly set in Berkshire. The title character is known as the Moor of Venice. A Capulet and a Montague fall in love. The character Falstaff first appears in this play, the only one of his plays to have an animal in the title, and Shylock demands his pound of flesh. I'll read those all one last time. Largely set in the Forest of Arden, predominantly set in Berkshire. The title character is known as the Moor of Venice, a Capulet and a Montague fall in love. The character Falstaff first appears in this play, the only one of his plays to have an animal in the title, and Shylock demands his pound of flesh. There we are. We are looking for the title of each of these Shakespeare plays. And obviously, Sam, you're going to try and find the one you think the fewest of our 100 people knew. Um, welcome to the show, Sam. Uh, what do you do, Sam? Um, I work in the travel industry. Um, I work for a lovely hotel company that has hotels at Mauritius and the Maldives. God, you've got a, that's marketing. a great place to be working. It's quite nice. I work yeah. here, obviously. Not well, there. obviously, yes. <laughs> but um, if you had to go and visit there. Yeah, it's tough and I do go. Yeah, yeah it's really hard work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good. Uh, what do you get up to in your spare time, Sam? Um, I quite like rolling around in mud in various parks in London um, in the form of military fitness, boot camp things. So uh, get shouted at and uh, roll around in mud and snow. How often do you do that? Things. About two or three times a week. Wow, in all weathers? Yep, so we were building snowmen at Christmas time, so yeah, in the snow. Wow, God, well done you. Yeah, yeah. F good fun? Yeah, well, at the time, no. Afterwards, you do at feel right. End. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. OK, now, you have first pick of this board, so... I'm going to go for... I think I'm just going to play really safe. There's lots of ones I could guess at, and I just don't think it's worth taking the risk, and it's been a really long time since I did Shakespeare. So I'm going to go for um, A Capulet and Montague Fall in Love as Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet, it's says good. Sam. I just go safe. Romeo and Juliet. Well, you're on 19. The high score is on 100 of Chris and David. If you can score 80 or less, you're into the next round. There's your red line. Romeo and Juliet, will it get you below that line? Is right. And it does. 55. 55 takes your total up to 74, Sam. Well done. Good answer, Sam. It's interesting, isn't it? When we have people on the show who work in cake shops, sometimes they bring us a cake. And if we have somebody yeah. who works, say, in a badge shop, they will bring us a badge. Invariably, they will. And Sam, I'm thinking, works essentially in a shop that sells holidays in the Maldives, which, <laughs> isn't it? I was given mine before the show. <laughs> yep, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you really got a free holiday to the Morgan? Yeah, yeah from Sam. <laughs> Actually, no, not it's to the Mauritius, it's to Mauritius. Anyway, now then, Alan. Alan, you're on 41. The high scorers are Chris and David on 100 still. So a score of 58 or less sees you into the next round. Um, remind us what you do, Alan. I work for the Rugby Football Union as a training manager. Very good. And when you're not doing that, Alan, what do you get up to? Um, I stay involved with rugby. I coach the ladies' team uh, at Nova Castrians in Newcastle. Um, Drink cider. Kind of summarises my activity. Are, are you very knowledgeable on cider? Um, I know ones that I like and that I don't like. Do you drink? Do, or do you drink the stuff that comes in sort of? That's the that stuff you, I like. The, the cloudier, the cloudy and, and yeah, flat. Oh yeah, sediment flat. And your your, your eyesight's still pretty good, isn't yeah, it? Give, thought, give yeah. it a go. Good, good stuff. Now then, Alan, remember we want the names of these Shakespeare plays. 
There are six left on that board. What are you going to go for? Well, I'm also a former PE teacher. Oh, you are? <laughs> really? <laughs> Just obviously setting myself up here for a dreadful <laughs> answer. Um, How have we got three former PE teachers on the show? <laughs> there's, there's two. There's one that I could go with, and there's one that I still don't really have any confidence in. I'm going to go for the title character is known as the Moor of Venice. I'm going to go for the Merchant of Venice. The Merchant of Venice, second time it's come up in this round. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, for the Moor of Venice. If it is, let's see how many people said it. There's your red line. Oh, bad luck, Alan. I'm afraid the Moor of Venice is not the Merchant of Venice. Scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 141. So you were a PE teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I probably I've should have it. gone for the other one in hindsight. <laughs> I have got it. That's good. The PE teachers have scored 275 between them <laughs> in this round. Now then, Chris. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, you I'm going to guess you are still a school teacher. I am still a school teacher, yeah. Yep. You are, and what do you teach? Um, modern languages are my two main academic subjects. Um, but I'm also head of the, what we call the PSHCE department. PSHCE? Yeah. Uh, sex, drugs and rock and roll, basically. <laughs> uh, personal self, health, social, citizenship, education. Wow. And that, that's just, that's just, I mean, there's no exam in that, presumably. Uh, you can take exams. Our course is a non-exam in one, but there are qualifications right. for it, yeah. OK, what's that? Uh, cleaning your teeth? Yeah, sort of personal health care, uh, learning how to tie bow ties, things like that, you know, the important <laughs> stuff in life. <laughs> Very important indeed. Now, Chris, um, how's your Shakespeare? Oh, beyond measure. In, 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 the, in the good way? Uh, not necessarily, no. no. <laughs> OK. OK, well, it, it's going to need to be quite good. You need to be scoring 40 or less with this yeah. answer. I, I was going to have a, a shot in the dark, thinking that we've got nothing to lose. Uh, and then Alan went and got a hundred, so I don't know how safe to play it. Um, I'm going to go with my gut instinct and go for uh, the only one of his plays to have an animal in the title. And I th hope that that was Androcles and the Lion. Androcles and the Lion? Yeah. OK, Androcles and the Lion. Here comes your red line. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Androcles and the Lion. Oh, bad luck. Bad luck, Chris, I'm afraid. An incorrect answer scores you the maximum of 100 points, takes your total up to 200. Perfect. Sorry, Chris, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you ever fill in for the PE teacher at your school? <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe this, my first job was PE in English. <laughs> I saw yeah. the light and then moved on to modern languages, but... This is extraordinary. Shakespeare longer. meets PE teachers is essentially what we've done here today. <laughs> Becky, what was your job before you became a full-time mum? I was a PA. Oh, <laughs> PA. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a relief. Yeah, uh, Andrew Cleese and the Lions, one of Aesop's fables, I'm afraid. Oh, not, uh, not, not a Shakespeare play. Yeah, there you are. Now, Mark, I have great news for you. Mm. Great news for you. You are through to the next round. That is good news. Even if you score 100 points, you are through to the next round. Um, remind us what you do, Mark. I'm retired, but I used to work in procurement with the railway industry and then with the NHS. That's right. And what do you like getting up to, Mark? Uh, I read, I play sports, tennis, badminton, squash, racquetball, uh, table tennis, uh, cycle a bit. Um, a lot of hand-eye stuff going yes. on there. Yes, yes. OK. Shakespeare, Mark. Uh, yeah, not good. Um, but fortunately we're through, so I'm going to have a guess at the title character is known as the Moor of Venice and say Hamlet. T um, Hamlet, you say, the title character of the Moor of Venice. Well, no red line for you, you're already through, but let's see if that's right and how many people said it. Nope! Another incorrect answer, another 100 points, 175, your total. Hasn't been an... <laughs> It hasn't been a massive success this round, has it? It hasn't really, no. At least I'm hoping perhaps some people at home are feeling clever now because they, uh, <laughs> they did better than the contestants. Yeah. Do you think, yeah, um, Hamlet, the, the Prince of Denmark, Hamlet, the, uh, the Moor of Venice is... Othello. Know, Othello. Yeah, absolutely, would have scored 21 points. Now, the play largely set in the Forest of Arden. Is as you like it. As you like it. Would have scored nothing at all. So very, very well played and very well done if you got that at home as well. 
Now, there is a one play which has an animal in the title. It's not uh, Androcles and the Lion. It is... Taming of the Shrew. The Taming of the Shrew. Yeah, absolutely right. I, you may have been going through all his uh, plays. I wonder if you got to it. 12 points would have scored you. Uh, Shylock demands his pound of flesh in a very familiar play. Merchant of Venice. The Merchant of Venice. It was up there somewhere. Would have scored 35. The character Falstaff first appears in... Henry IV, part one. Henry IV, part one. Absolutely, one point. There's a lot to fill in on this board, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, right. Come on, guys. Uh, and uh, the play predominantly set in Berkshire. Merry Wives of Windsor. It is the Merry Wives of Windsor. Yeah, well played. Six points, that would have got you. Very well done to anybody who got all 14 of those. That's very, very impressive. But essentially, if you, do, if you got through to the next round, very well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our first round, the pair will be leaving us with their high score of 200. It's Chris and David. Dear, oh dear, I'm so sorry. We, we, we've given you the worst category there. Ah, oh, well, we have to say goodbye to you. We'll see you again next time, Chris and David. Uh, but meantime, thanks very much for playing, Chris and David. Bye. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Well, only three pairs remain. And after this round, obviously, we say goodbye to another pair for our head-to-head -head round. Now, Cliff and Alan, you're the only people who've been here before. Round two. You remember that well from last time. Lynn and Mark, welcome to round two. This is what it looks like. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Becky and Sam, the only remaining new pair and our low scorers in that last round. No incorrect answers from you, so very well done. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two is... Monarchs. Monarchs. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? <laughs> and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, so our question concerns... The Diamond Jubilee Lunch for Sovereign Monarchs. The Diamond Jubilee Lunch for Sovereign Monarchs. Yeah, if you thought the last round was hard... <laughs> welcome to this. We're about to show you a picture taken at the, uh, the Diamond Jubilee Lunch for Sovereign Monarchs in 2012. It's the Queen alongside various kings, queens, sheikhs, sultans, other representatives of other countries. We need you to name any country represented in the photo you're about to see. So the country of any of the kings, queens, sheikhs and so on you're about to see in this picture. Just looking for the name of the country. Very, very best of luck. OK, so we're now going to show you an image, and in that image are these various sovereign monarchs. And as Richard says, you merely have to name a country that is represented in that picture. And here is the image. There they are. Oh, I'm guessing that was taken before the lunch, cos after it... Whoa! -ho! <laughs> And the one answer we won't accept is Queen Elizabeth II. Any of the countries that she is, uh, she is monarch of, I'm afraid, not an acceptable answer. OK. Now then, Lynn, what are you going to go for? Well, as a PE teacher, this is really <laughs> up my street. <laughs> um, Denmark. Denmark, says Lynn. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Denmark. Is right. Oh, it's a good answer, Lynn. Look at that. Down it goes. 16 for Denmark. That's a great answer. Good answer, Queen Margrethe II of Denmark. There she is at the back in the sunglasses. No, that's not her. There she is. <laughs> uh, now then, Cliff. Tough one. I will work with a punt in Brunei. Brunei, says Cliff Brunei. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said that. It's right. Very well done indeed, Cliff. Four. Very well recognised there. Brunei. Well played, Cliff, the Sultan of Brunei, of course, there he is. And uh, do you know what he used to do before he was the Sultan of Brunei? Saxophonist. <laughs> no, he was a PE teacher. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sam. Oh, Sam. So hard. I don't, don't look at familiar at all, any of them. Um, I'll take a complete stab in the dark and say Oman. Oman. Oman, says Sam. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Oman. Ooh. Ooh, unfortunately, he wasn't there. <laughs> uh, you score the maximum of 100 points. I'm sorry, Sam. Yeah, sorry, Sam, the Sultan of Oman, uh, not invited. Oh, not invited? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just assuming that by the fact that he hasn't... Cos if you're invited, you'd go, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, maybe he... Well, no, maybe he was busy. 
Yeah, but if the Maybe Queen I'm... invites you to, to a Diamond Jubilee lunch for Sovereign Monarchs, you would, you'd make time. <laughs> OK. Uh, thanks very much indeed. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. Cliff and Allen looking very strong at this stage of the game. Lovely low score of four from Cliff, then up to 16 where we find Lynn and Mark, and then up to 100 where we find Sam and Becky. Bad luck. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, now, Becky, we are looking for the countries represented by these sovereign monarchs gathered around our own sovereign monarch. And as ever, you're going to try and find the lowest scoring one. You are the high scorers by a margin on 100. But who knows, there might be some more high scores to come. This isn't great. I don't recognise anyone. Um, I might just have to guess. And I'm going to go for Egypt. Egypt? Yeah. OK, Egypt, says Becky. No red line for you, you're the high scorers, but let's see if Egypt is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. No oh, bad luck, Becky, I'm afraid. An incorrect answer scores you the maximum of 100 points and takes your total up to 200. There goes our holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, Becky, they've they got a president in, uh, in Egypt. Now then, Alan. Alan, you're through to the head-to-head. -head. Even if you score 100 points, you won't overtake Becky and Sam on 200. What are you going to go for? Um, I think the fella front left could be from Japan. You're going to say Japan. Alan says Japan. No red line for you. You're already through. But let's see if Japan's right and how many people said it. It's right. Well, Cliff scored four in the last round. 16 you score. Takes your total up to 20. Uh, amazing play on podium too. Well done, guys. Yes, that's Emperor Akihito of Japan. He's uh, the 125th Japanese emperor. He's a direct descendant of the very first one from 660 BC. Direct descendant. Wow. Yeah. Uh, now then, Mark, you too are through to the head-to-head. -head. I'm thinking you might have a good answer here, Mark. Are you? Yep. Right. <laughs> um, I'm going to guess for Monaco. 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 Let's see if Monaco's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. No red line for you, you're already through. Absolutely right. Ten for Monaco. Very well done. Takes your total up to 26. Yep, Prince Albert II of Monaco, there he is, uh, enjoying the festivities. What a... <laughs> look at that, what a party. That's great, isn't it? Um, but let's take a look at some of the pointless answers. There's only two pointless answers up there, amazingly. Um, and they are Bulgaria, there you go, and Lesotho. So terrific work if you said any of those. And the top three, they were Denmark, we've already heard, 16 points. Saudi Arabia, 23. And the Netherlands with 25. You know how when our people are polled, they yeah. don't know they're being polled for pointless. Yeah. They don't actually know why they're necessarily answering the question. Yeah. What must they have thought when they were suddenly presented with that? Said, name these people. <laughs> if that would be me, I would suspect I was being lined up for some sort of spying job. <laughs> oh. Perhaps that's what they think, because they're endlessly being asked questions about sort of where various cities are. Yeah. And big geological features. Perhaps they're thinking, this is MI5, I'm in. almost certain. <laughs> Interesting. Now, thanks very much, Richard. So, uh, at the end of that round, I'm afraid Becky and Sam, you are our high scorers on 200. You are our newest members of the 200 Club, so welcome to that. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll see you again next time. Of course, everyone gets two chances to reach our point this final, and we'll look forward to that. Uh, thanks very much. Meantime, Becky and Sam, great contestants. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for our head-to-head. -head. <laughs> well, congratulations, Cliff and Alan, Mark and Lynn. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at two. So we have to decide which pair it's going to be that goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. And in order to do that, you're now going to go head to head. The big difference, of course, is now you are allowed to confer. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for the money. Now then, Cliff and Alan, what a fantastic game you've had. It turns out you know more about people who are turning up to the Queen's lunch for sovereign monarchs than you do about Shakespeare. I mean, were you there? Won the door. Oh, right. <laughs> well, so it was you who didn't let her man in. No, I wasn't. <laughs> right. It was meant to train us. <laughs> 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 
Well, great news is, obviously, having made it this far, you can put your heads together and, uh, and discuss before giving your answers. So very, very best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question, and it concerns... Epsom Derby winners. Epsom Derby winners. Richard. We're about to show you the names of five horses which have won the Epsom Derby, but we've removed alternate letters from their names. Can you fill in those gaps and give us the best answer? Good luck. OK, let's reveal our five Epsom Derby winners, and here they are. We have G blank, L blank, L blank, O, N blank, J blank, N blank, K blank, A blank, T blank, O blank, I blank, E blank, M blank, L blank, R blank, E blank, and S blank, E blank, G blank, R. There they are. I'll read them all again without the blanks. G L L O, N J N K, A T O I E, M L R E, and S E G R. Now, Cliff and Alan, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. We'll go. Mill Reef. Mill Reef. Mill Reef. One up from the bottom. Mill Reef. Now then, Mark and Lynn, talk us through the board if you can. <laughs> um, we don't know number one or number three. Um, should we go well, for the well, second? We think, we think the second one's Nijinsky and the bottom one is Shergar. Mill Reef is the fourth one. Uh, we knew Mill Reef as well. Oh, Trying to Nijinsky. 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 So we have Mill Reef and we have Nijinsky. Cliff and Alan said Mill Reef. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. Mill Reef. It is right. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Twelve for Mill Reef. Very well done. Now then, Mark and Lynn have gone for Nijinsky. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Nijinsky. It's right. 56. <laughs> Pretty comprehensive win there for Cliff and Alan. After one question, you are up 1-0. There was only one answer there that would have beaten Mill Reef, actually. Let's go through all of them. Uh, the top one, a uh, recent winner, Galileo, uh, would have scored 23 points. The one at the bottom, as you rightly said, is Shergar, would have scored you too many points. Kidnapped over 30 years ago now, Shergar. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, 64 for Shergar. And the best answer there uh, is the uh, 2007 Derby winner, Authorised. Would have scored two points, so very well done if you said that at home. Thanks very much indeed. OK, here comes your second question. Mark and Lynn, you have to win this one to stay in the game. It concerns... Bob Marley. Bob Marley, Richard. We're going to give you five clues now to facts about Bob Marley. Can you give us the most obscure answer? OK, let's reveal our five clues to facts about Bob Marley. And here they come. We have got... Born in this Caribbean country, the name of Chris Blackwell's record label who signed Marley in the 1970s, the name of his backing group, the legendary reggae musician who produced most of the tracks on African Herbsman, and finally, the type of soldier mentioned in the title of his 1983 hit single. I'll read those all one last time. Born in this Caribbean country, name of Chris Blackwell's record label who signed Marley in the 1970s, name of his backing group, the legendary reggae musician who produced most of the tracks on African Herbsman, and the type of soldier mentioned in the title of his 1983 hit single. Five clues to facts about Bob Marley. Now then, Mark and Lynn, you go first. The way this is the backing group. I don't know Name of his backing group, The Whalers. The Whalers, say Mark and Lynn, The Whalers. So, Cliff and Alan, the board is all yours. Talk us through as many of the answers as you can. Well, First, our, our Uncle Colin absolutely loves Bob Marley and he will slaughter us if we don't get through this, but that's no guarantee. <laughs> um, I think Jamaica, the Caribbean country. Island Records. Island Records, Whalers. Um, Buffalo, the bottom one. Buffalo Soldier and... I don't know who... Um, would it be Jimmy Cliff, maybe? No. But I don't think that's we'll do right. Um, Island Records? I, th I think we'll go Island Records. Island Records. Chris Blackwell's record label, Island Records. So we have the Whalers and we have Island Records. Mark and Lynn, you need to win this to stay in the game. Cliff and Alan, you need to win this to avoid slaughter. Mark and Lynn have gone with the Whalers. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said that, the Whalers. Oh. 
71 for the Whalers. Uh, Cliff and Alan, you've gone for Island Records. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said that. Island Records. It's right. And it wins you the question. That's a great answer. Eight for Island Records. Very well done, Cliff and Alan. Which means, after only two questions, you are through to the final 2-0. Well played, Cliff and Alan. Again, there was only one answer that could have beaten you. Um, it's not the top one. That is right. It's uh, Jamaica. It scored 84 points. The type of soldier, as you said, is Buffalo soldier. It would have scored 39. The best answer, in fact, is a pointless answer. The reggae musician who produced most of uh, African herbsmen is the brilliant Lee Scratch Perry. So very well done if you said that at home. It's a terrific answer. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, so the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid, it's Mark and Lynn. Well, it was round one last time. It was. Head to head this time. Yes. Much, much better. Um, but I'm afraid, yeah, two perfectly good answers, but uh, Cliff and Alan really managed to find some fantastic answers there, lovely low scores, which I'm afraid means you leave this round with no points at all. But it's been great having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. Mark and Lynn. <laughs> but for Cliff and Alan, it's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Cliff and Alan. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy, so very well done. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,000. <laughs> to win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. First thing, you have to choose a category and you have five options to choose from, and they are... Film writers, UK politics, rappers, football, astronauts. Football or UK politics? Well, you are reasonably strong on UK politics. But we're both reasonably strong on football. No, nah, because nah, it could be football in Venezuela. I'd go UK politics. At least we've got a... Club deal. OK. UK politics? UK politics it is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many 19th century prime ministers as they could. 19th century prime ministers, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for you to name anybody who was prime minister of Great Britain in the 19th century, please. Very, very best of luck, guys. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £2,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Ready as we'll ever be. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. In hindsight, that was an error. Very bad one, we, yes. Um, totally blank. Of Blackadder, there was Pitt the Elder. And Pitt the Younger. Pitt the Younger. Well, they were the... Well, they were the 80s. Is Lord Harmston there? Is Lord Harmston there? I have no idea. Lord Harmston's um, popped up in my head from somewhere. Yeah. Let's go one of the Pitts. Pitt the... Uh, Harmston, 19th Pitt the Younger, because he's closer. Pitt the Younger. Um, 19th century. What's that? Baldwin? 18? No, Baldwin wasn't. What's it called? Um, What's that, 18 something? Um, oh, I've got no idea. Disaster. Does really? No, no, get out of it. Let's just go. Does really? Some made up name. Does really? What? What's his first name, though? Do you know? Bob Disraeli. Does really? Does <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Ten seconds left. That's the 19th century, is that? 1800. Uh, Benjamin Disraeli. Benjamin Disraeli, is that right? OK, that's your time up. We were looking for 19th century Prime Ministers. I now need your three answers. Uh, Pip the Younger. Pip the Younger. Benjamin Disraeli. Benjamin Disraeli. And Lord Harmston. And Lord Harmston. OK. Now, of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Uh, Lord Harmston. Lord Harmston. We'll put him last. What's your least likely? Benjamin Disraeli. Benjamin Disraeli will put first. Pit the younger in the middle. OK, let's put those up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Benjamin Disraeli, Pitt the younger, and Lord Harmiston. So we were looking for 19th century prime ministers. Your first answer, Benjamin Disraeli, you thought was your least likely to be pointless. Only one of these answers has to be right for you to win that jackpot of £2,000. What would you do with £2,000, Cliff? A little bit of work on me, gone. Alan? Um, I would obviously take the wife away for a lovely trip. Very good indeed. OK, well, best of luck. Three answers on the board. If one of those is pointless, you'll be leaving here with £2,000. So your first answer. Let's see. How many people said Benjamin Disraeli? Is it pointless? 
It's right. Down it goes. Now, if this goes all the way down to zero, you will leave here with £2,000. Down it goes through the third. Oh, 32. <laughs> 32. Not a bad answer. But it has to be pointless in this round. I'm amazed it's right. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, man. So, obviously not a pointless answer. Only two more chances to win today's jackpot. We're looking for 19th century prime ministers. Your next answer was Pitt the Younger. Now, you quibbled over which of the two pits to go for, and you went for the younger, because he was nearer. Precisely. Exactly right. Good. OK, well, let's see. Obviously, it has to be correct, then it has to be pointless. If it's both of those things, you will win £2,000. Let's see how many people said Pitt the Younger. It's right. Now then, Benjamin Disraeli took us down to 32. Pitt the Younger takes us down through the 40s, through the 30s, and 28. <laughs> 28 for Pitt the Younger. You only have one more chance to win today's jackpot, £2,000. 19th century prime ministers is our category. Your third and final answer was Lord Harmiston. Now, this just came from nowhere, did it? I didn't know, it just popped in. Could just be popped helped. in. Totally okay. wrong. OK, Lord Harmiston. Well, uh, it has to be correct, then it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So, for £2,000, let's find out. Lord Harmiston, is it a pointless answer? No! <laughs> Bad luck. Bad luck. Two good answers there. But I'm afraid you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you won't be winning today's jackpot of £2,000, which rolls over onto the next show. But uh, we've loved having you on the show, and you do, of course, win our pointless trophy each. So very well done. Thank you very much. And lucky guys, well played throughout the show on that last answer. I think you're thinking of Lord Palmerston but. or Viscount Palmerston here. It would have scored you 14 points, though. Um, there's a few low scorers. George Canning would have scored you two. You'd have got one point for the Duke of Portland, Earl of Rosebery, Henry Addington. Well done if you said any of those. There's only four pointless answers. Let's see if you got one of them. I know some people at home definitely would have done the Earl of Aberdeen, the Earl of Derby, who was uh, Prime Minister three times in the 19th century, Lord John Russell, and uh, earlier than the three of those, Viscount Goderich. All of those pointless answers. Very, very well done if you said any of those. Shall we do football instead, guys? Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Well, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you, Cliff and Alan, but it's been great having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. Great contestants, Cliff and Alan. <laughs> well, sadly, they didn't win today's jackpot, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £3,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>